Hello, everybody. Uh, again, welcome to Facebook. Welcome to YouTube. And uh, welcome, everybody that's here. Uh, we do have to have a different format. Uh, as you can see, this is not a little different than usually that we've been uh, doing. That being said, um, it's just because we've been have nothing but problems. Uh, technology. Um, I just, man, I don't know how a three-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old could do this stuff, and I can't figure it out. But I just always have problems. So, uh, would you like to open us up in prayer? You got to speak up because this doesn't pick up the at all. I felt like it was nice, but deep in my heart, I knew that uh, it was wrong. And I felt like I would uh, encounter, you know, spiritual beings that could be harmed. And then I remember saying the name Jesus, or I said the Lord's Prayer, and I was saying to leave me alone. And so, Lord, uh, I believe in you. But I don't want to just believe. I want to have that, you know, intimate relationship with you. So whether I'm here or somewhere else, um, with uh, other people worshiping you, that, um, you know, in other words, you're the main focus, God. I mean, I appreciate coming here every Sunday and having a nice meal, you know, afterwards. That is nice. So I thank you for... John and Biz and Tim and Amanda for that. But the main per main, main reason I want to come is because I want to have a relationship with you. I want to have that abundant life that the Bible speaks of. You know, because you can't really walk up to another person and say, I know the Lord. And they say, why do you know the Lord? And it's like, oh. So uh, I I just want to, um, an intimate relationship with you. And I pray everyone here in this house and even the people on Facebook that you give them that also. Amen. 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 Thank you, David. Um, there it is. So people that probably didn't hear that great prayer, but uh, trust me, it was a wonderful prayer. Uh, we really appreciate that. That be that being said, here um, we I, as we're talking, uh, I'll leave this up for you to visit at a later date. Um, you can go to Facebook and you can get the study notes, uh, or you could email me here. People on Facebook, you that you don't see this, but you could. Uh, Go on Facebook, get the study notes. But people on YouTube, you won't see this. You could copy down this uh, uh, web address, uh, mtdaily at gmail.com, and uh, send me your uh, request for the sermon notes, and I'd be happy to send it to you. And, of course, if you have any questions about our comments about this, feel free to put them in the comment section. But feel free to email me uh, and, and write this question out. The other thing I do ask is that, you know, if you do like and appreciate these words, not only just say like, put the little like button, but please share. Uh, when you go on to YouTube, uh, please subscribe to this as we could uh, enables us to reach out to more and more people. That being said, I think it's time to get started in the Word. And, well, we're going to take a break. That thing's going to go, go kabong, kabong, kabong in a few minutes anyway. So when it does, I will cut talking. Um, nevertheless, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6, okay? And we're going to only do a few verses today verses uh, 10 through 13. 
But what did we talk about yesterday? And don't say Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> yeah, last Sunday, not yesterday. Yeah. I worked in the yard yesterday. No. Uh, but what were we talking about? Yeah, you know, never ask, never ask your congregation what it was you were talking about. Let me go back here. All right, obedience goes both ways, employee, employer, uh, masters versus servants. And we live in a day and age where we really don't have that master-servant issue. But we do have employee-employer issue. And how many of you really have thought, hopefully all of you, and most of you don't work, I don't think, for an employee. But those that do thought that, you know, you sh you're working as unto the Lord, not as to your supervisor, not for your, um, your your immediate superior, but your work. Anyone did that? Okay, just pause until this uh, 12 o'clock. We started a little early, but uh, we'll just wait for it to keep, get rid of its kabonging. All right, David, continue on. Operative word used to in case anybody on social media is checking him out. <laughs> Amen. Good, good testimony. Now, I know you're not working right now, but I know you are working. But you're not working for a said quote unquote employer. But you are do, but you are working, right? And I'm not going to share with uh, what that is with the public. But do you work as unto the Lord or as an obligation? Can I get that across to you that when you're doing the things you're doing are extremely difficult, okay? So are you doing it as unto the Lord or because you have to? Because if you don't, there's going to be consequences. I have my opinion. You don't have to answer me, but I'm putting this out for a thought process that even you, really will gain spiritual growth by working that job you're doing, that very important job you're doing, as unto the Lord, not as an obligation. Do you hear me? Okay. Um, you you agree, Des? Yeah. Yeah. That, that being well, well said then, John. You sometimes say something smart. So now, oh yeah, we got to read the scripture. So now we're in chapter 6. Now we're in chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. 
finally. Wow, finally. Those are always great words when a pastor stuck. Who starts the sermon out? Finally. Yeah, me, right? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen. So, uh, is this big enough? The font, font big enough? You all could see that? Read that fine? All right. So, the first part of Paul's letter to the Ephesians and to us uh, was to instruct any that would hear not to be high minded as we all were once part of the rebellion against God, which started in the garden of God and is going on to this day. Paul then reminds us that we were worthy of complete annihilation because of this rebellion. But God, who is love, made a path of reconciliation back to the Father. He then continues to teach us in his letter how we are to relate to God, giving us examples we can understand and relate to, such as. Before I continue on, any comments? No. Um, I, I, I heard a mm-hmm over here when I talked about the rebellion. That you were part of a rebellion in the Garden of Eden. You know, uh, you're worthy of death. You're wor This is the sin we need to repent of. See, we don't need to repent of lying, stealing, or cheating on your taxes. Although I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying that's not what's keeping you out of heaven. No sin recorded in the Bible is keeping you out of heaven. The rebellion against God, the great sin, the great error, is what's doing it. And logically, think about this, guys. You're at that. You're at the altar, and and uh, the pastor will say, "Well, you got to repent of your sins." Well, what if you don't remember them all? What if you don't repent of them all? Does that mean you don't go to heaven? See, there's only one sin. Only one sin we need to repent of. That's being in Satan. That's being in sin. That's belonging and remaining in the rebellion. And believe it or not, the precious, wonderful you over there sitting on the couch, before Christ, you were a rebel, a rebel against God. It's hard to fathom, but it's true, according to the Word of God. So the examples Paul's been giving us in the uh, book of Ephesians were what? One, uh, children, honor and obey your parents. That was it. We read that in Ephesians 1 through 2. About parents, teach while protecting your children. That was in Ephesians 6, verse 4. Now, how many parents protect their children? We want to say all, right? But there's a lot of parents that do not protect and have no desire to protect their child. But God is using this as it's the normal understanding. Everybody, even if they don't do it, they know they should. There's like an built-in uh, attitude how we are to treat one another and that parents are to protect their children and teach them. Say again, please. 
all in all Egyptians, <laughs> all in Ephesians. Yeah, do you know why? Because we're in the book of Ephesians. Okay. Yeah. Now it, it also the good one, the big one, the owner number one was wives submit to your own husbands as unto Christ. That's that's right out of the Bible, guys. Yes, Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-two. But here's the other one uh, every wife points out. Hey, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's right out of the Bible again, Ephesians 5.25. Now, masters, honor and support those whom God has placed in your care as one who answers to God. You know, if you're a Christian and you have an employ a business... You got to answer to God how you've been treating your employees. That's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. And then, servant, work for your master as if they were Christ himself. As if it was Christ there sitting in the office, watching the monitor, drinking his coffee, while you're out there working. Right? So these are all examples we can relate to, right? aren't they? This is how the Word of God is. It's so simple. He gives us examples that fit our life 2,000 years ago and fit our lives today. So finally, I, Paul encourages us to be strong in the Lord by keeping the freedoms Christ has freed us from, which brings us to verse 10 of chapter 6, our today's message. How many of you have been freed from something, some devastating issue? It's real easy. Let's, I was freed from drugs, alcohol. I was freed from abuse. I was freed from this, that, or the other. Um, how can people give that back to Satan? How can they walk, having been freed, how can they walk back into captivity? Happens all the time. It shouldn't. It doesn't have to. But I'm sure each and every one of us know somebody that had a terrible, quote unquote, sinful life. Followed God for three, five, six, ten years. And then for whatever reason went back to the same lifestyle they had before. Yes, sir. That is a root cause. Yes, they never had they haven't finished a race. They have not become born again. Yeah. But um, interesting. Once I would um start feeling good again, then uh, unfortunately I would say, oh, it must have not been that bad. So then I would go back. Right. Yeah. Or you could always repent later. You know. Especially us guys, let us go sow our oats now and then we'll repent when I'm old and feeble, right? And women, I'm sure, have said and done the same thing. I won't because I got an overwhelming audience of women and might, we, we might just. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Stay out of that one. Shut your mouth before you get there. All right, so let's go and read verse 10 of chapter 6. Okay, finally. And you notice this format, people, on uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, I got it where you can click on these. These are the um, strong coordinates. And, of course, you can't click on them, but I, I put it on it there. You could go up. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might.
Come on, this is getting a little difficult there. The statement, finally, be strong in the Lord, is not Paul's last list of commands for us, being the last part of his letter, the tail end of his letter. Uh, rather, he is saying from henceforth, being able to operate in the dominion of Christ's yeah. abilities. So if you look up this word finally, it's more like henceforth, from now on. You can see through it, and this is why we donate to Blue Letter. See, we get to use Blue Letter. It's great. Okay. Uh, remaining to rest hereafter for the future, henceforth. So Paul's, when he's saying finally, like, okay, guys, I'm coming to the end of my letter. Finally, let's do this obligation. No, he's saying, like, from now on, that you know. How to treat one another you know how to treat your wives you know how to treat your children you know how to treat your employers employees now from henceforth now be strong in the lord okay uh, but how to be strong is to be enabled so now be enabled you see this word that we use strong it's been translated uh, to be strong, strengthen, increase in strength, enabled, be made strong. So these are things saying that, hey, yes, God indeed has called you to fight, but be of good cheer. You're enabled. You're strengthened. You have everything you need to win. Okay? So, but you're to operate in dominion. So if you're going to fight a battle and you're a superior armament, let's say America is fighting against another nation. We watched the movie or the series SEAL Teams, right, Des? And we write it. They're, they have dominion, not dominion over the place they're going to, like, cause government to work or so, but they have dominion in that they are a superior force, fighting force. We have dominion over them because whether or not I ever cause them to do what I say, I have dominion over them because I am a superior fighting force. Christians have dominion over demons because they are a superior fighting force. Did I open this and show you that that word uh, dominion is for strength and is to a force, strength, power, might, great power. Yes, you see it. Dominion right there. So we finally, brethren, be strong, right, in the Lord. Fight at the dominion you have. But it's in Christ's abilities. So again, we talked about SEAL Team. Did, did, was the individuals of SEAL Team better than individuals of their enemies? No. Their enemies might have been more physically uh, stronger, mentally smarter. But because of their abilities, because you had dominion, that you were able to do more fantastic, wonderful things. Like you had night vision goggles. You had drones flying over your head. You had all people, kinds of people in the background telling you uh, if an in enemy or a combatant is coming or if there was a civilian casualty around. See, this is ability, force. So therefore, reading this verse, uh, to be strong in the Lord, to finally be strong in the Lord, is, I think, he's saying, from henceforth, be enabled to operate in the dominion of Christ's ability. Make sense? 
I hope it does because um, if it does to you, we're going to get to this point. You really don't have an excuse. So Ephesians 11, uh, 6, 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Everybody know what wiles of the devil is? Yeah, schemes, trickery, screams, plans. Okay. Now to put on the whole armor of God seems pretty straightforward. Yet most people who wear armor can still receive a deadly wound when engaged in battle. I.e., if two are battling to the death and both are wearing armor, one still dies. Big pause. You ever think about that? Armor is not a guarantee that you're not going to get wounded. I.e., if you got, like, how about two knights or two Roman soldiers or something? They're both wearing the same amount of armor, and they're fighting each other. And one dies. So, um, with those glasses on, uh, therefore this armor spoken of is not one to protect vital organs, but is actually an offensive weapon designed to overcome your opponent. This is emphasized in the tail end of verse 11, telling us we can stand against the wiles of the devil, meaning Christians have the ability to never lose ground to their adversaries when fighting against them. Nevertheless, there will be those who believe God but are unwilling to fight against the flesh because they love the pleasures of the flesh more than the spirit. My wife and I were talking about this the other day about these so-called uh, Christians, the, the Christian majority, that if Christians all voted that we should we should actually run the election the way it does. And my statement was that they're not Christians. They love the works of the flesh more than they love walking in the spirit. Otherwise, they would vote against it. You know how many pastors out there have gotten their children, their daughters to have an abortion as to not shame them? that their daughter got pregnant? You know how many fathers are having their daughters have an abortion so that they don't shame their father, their family? You know how many times people will just not walk in the spirit, but walk in the flesh because they enjoy going out with prostitutes. They enjoy going out and getting they enjoy going out and doing all these heinous, stupid things that so many, the moral majority, say is wrong. And that's why we see all these pastors fail and fall. Because they'd rather do the works of the flesh than those of the Spirit. So Galatians chapter 5 addresses this, starting in verse 16. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do you not fulfill the lust of the flesh? By walking in the Spirit. This is a 100% guarantee. If you have a drug problem, which I teach people, which I have this huge problem with celibate recovery, you do not need an accountability problem, uh, uh, partner. All you need to do to never take another injection of heroin is walk in the spirit. All you need to do to never go watch another pornographic video is walk in the spirit. All you need to do to never go lie still and cheat your brother is to walk in the Spirit. This is a 100% guarantee. 
For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. It does not mean that you won't be tempted. Satan will always try to tempt you. As if when you read verses 19 through 21, it talks about the works of the flesh. Now let's move on to verse 12. Any comments or anything about verse 11? Way too quiet out here, guys. Way too quiet out there. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness. Not rulers in darkness, the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Principality is like a, a, a an official. So our governor is a principality. Our mayor is a principality. But this is talking spiritual because it's, it's of the darkness. So it's not talking about your governor. It's not talking about Caesar. He's not saying we don't wrestle against Caesar. He's saying we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I mean that we do wrestle against Caesar because he previously said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against power principalities. Well, Caesar was a principality, okay? Um, but these are talked about demonic principalities, demons that are held to certain regions. You know, demons have certain geographical areas. And they're assigned. Now, I don't know who assigns them. Maybe God, maybe the devil or Satan. But they're assigned to a Pacific area. You ever drive somewhere and like have even kind of like the hair stand up on the back of your neck, get the heebie-jeebies? You just feel something really bad. And it's in a geographical area. And the only thing your first response is, is to get out of there as quick as possible. And when you get out, you feel safe. That's because they are appointed to that geographical area. Okay? They're a principality. Here again, Christians are to wrestle against their adversaries with no fear. Remember, we have the ability, we have the power, we have the might. With no fear. Yet our adversaries are not of the human kind, but of the demonic type who cannot be killed, only defeated. You realize we cannot kill demons. Plus some more, anyone, uh, I, I, I should have two of these so they could have this picture of there. But anyway, uh, split screen, I should have did a split screen. My pop, my mind's going out. You ever hear of somebody that cast out demons and they'll say, I, I send you to the abyss. Demons to the abyss. Now, not many of you may be in the uh, world of uh, exorcisms, but a lot of these exorcists will send a demon to the abyss. You know, that is completely unbiblical and it's not in there. You do not have the ability, the power, or the authority to do that. You could cast them out of that body only. And guess what? They, that demon could come back into that person. As Jesus said, go and sin no more unless a worse thing come to you. That a demon, when he goes in the air and dry places, he seeks out another place to live, finding none. He sees that the house he left, the person he left, is now clean and swept. So he goes out and gets seven more evil, more powerful demons than himself. And he goes back and re-enters into that person. 
and the case is worse for them than it was before. This teaches us we're not to be casting out every demon. Only those who God tells us to. Demon, Jesus didn't go out and cast out every demon he's seen. Only those who were ready to follow Jesus. Because it will be worse for them. The works of these adversaries can be seen in people who hold high political positions as well as our celebrities. Any of you guys watch the Fox News or just TV? Have, do you see people in, uh, uh, in political authority? You just wonder where their brains went? You know, how could they possibly think, do, and, and have the audacity to say it in public? You, and you wouldn't have seen it even 10 years ago. Yeah. Right. So that's where I say celebrities, as well as celebrities. These guys are, are people that we, for whatever reason, even though we know we shouldn't, we do look up to them. Because I guarantee you they did not invite me to the Oscars. And if they sent a panda picture out on me, they nobody would have thought here or there or anything, but. It's like, man, that guy's just filler to make other people look good or something. Okay? We're, therefore, we are not to fight against them. We're not to fight against them, but to pray against the demons so that the hold they have over us will be broken. Remember, to pray that God will grant them repentance so that they might come to their senses, recognizing it is the will of Satan they are doing, not their own. So our speaker of the house, so, so many people are against her, right? How many of these people pray for her? How many of these people pray like what the word of God says? And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patience, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. How many of us Christians have sit and prayed for people in the political office, in the political arena, celebrities that are making all these statements? How many of us have prayed that their eyes be open, that their ears be open, that they could hear the gospel, that repent and escape the trap them being taken captive by the devil at his will not many but that's how we're to pray you want to fix the problem get on your knees that's what the bible says and remember this is written at a time when they were under roman occupation Verse 13 of Ephesians. Any comments? I know my wife and I, we go through this all the time watching on the Fox News station. It says the uh, only thing that station is going to do is get you upset. doesn't fix one thing. Most of the time, with um, elected officials of the Democrats, they, they block them, you know, through their uh, little segments. And then at the very end, they'll say, um, they'll have a little prayer and they'll have nothing to do with them, but it'll be, they'll say, okay, my, I, my, my head is tripping and they'll pray, they'll pray for me. But the whole idea is that you, you never see this. You know, oh, you could, you could pray for Biden. 
Amen. So he based, uh, uh, you may not have heard, he basically said there's other uh, Christian shows and, uh, and conservative talk shows that they talk about how bad somebody is, and especially if they're a Democrat, how bad they is. And then they'll have, the Christian shows will have time to pray, but they never and do pray, but they never pray about the, the individual that is in a power of authority that has been taken captive by the devil. How many of us believe that a captive is a victim? Yeah, one hand going up. You know, so I, I want to say, well, I did say Speaker of the House, so I could say Nancy Pelosi, everybody could. She's a victim. I seen the frowns on her face. She'd be like, well, she's evil. Because she's working under the demonic suppression of the devil. She has been taking captive. What if she became a Christian? You wouldn't have to worry about her anymore. If she became truly born again, and I'm not somebody that just says, well, they're Catholic and they go to church, like our ex-president Bill Clinton. Oh, I'm a Christian, you know? Yeah, you're not a Christian any more than I'm a Mercedes Benz. Okay. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Why do you need to stand? When trouble comes, right? You don't have to hold your ground when everything's going good. You have to hold your ground when trouble comes. Yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, I got one more. This verse is restating verse 11. Remember we started? Finally, brethren, put on the whole armor of God. So this verse is restating verse 11 to put on the whole armor of God. I hope you have recognized. Anytime the scriptures restate something, it is to get the attention of the hearers that they may do what they are being taught. Thus, having done all to stand, is there is nothing left to do but to fight and take back the ground you have lost to the devil. My, my wife and I, and probably you have heard us state, we get tired of fighting the same battles over and over. Okay? We do. But guess what? Satan, our adversary, all these devils and demons, they've been at this a lot longer than you and I. We have the ability to defeat, to overcome. But they'll wear you out. They'll try to wear you out. This is what the word says. Be angry. Woohoo. What's this? Uh, people say Christians shouldn't be angry. This by the word of God says be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That word sun to go down doesn't make sunset. It's nothing against uh, 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 couples not being uh, arguing each other and then before they go to sleep at night, they'll wake up. This means never stop the fight. This statement is as an idiom used. Be angry and don't let the sun go down. It's like the fight against abortion. You know, you're going to fight today and you're going to suffer a lot in your fight. Guess what? The fight's going to be there again tomorrow. It's going to be there again the next day. It will be, the fight will be here until the second return of Christ. Or, well, I guess that really isn't true because we won't fight them when we're, when we're raptured. 
but their evil will be here to the second coming of Christ. See, so we need to have this understanding that we're to go out and fight even when we get tired. That's why we're to call upon the other. That's why God says, I'm to teach you, teach you to be a disciple, you to grow and mature, to cast out demons, to speak with new tongues, to lay hands on the sick, to take up serpents. Why? Because I might need you to come pray for me if I'm sitting on the side of the freeway. Do I want to call a paramedic or do I want to call you? We need to start walking in this thing and, and quit listening to the devil saying, oh, I can't do it. That's for the super saints. I just don't know how. God, the same God that's in me is in you. The same God that's in the Apostle Paul is in me. Conclusion. Through the equipping of the saints, Christians can fight against any demonic power, including unclean spirits, etc., and overcome them. Again, like I said, it doesn't mean they don't come back into the, peer, per, the host. But while you're with them, you don't have to be afraid of them. You can overcome them. Yet many of those equipped still refuse to engage in spiritual warfare. Thinking Jesus and all his angels are fighting for us. Therefore, they reason there is no need for their participation, lest they get in the way. You ever heard you fixed, you, you screwed up God's fix? You got in the way of God, now he's got to fix your fix when you're, that is totally from the pit of hell. You need to get in and fight, and God's given you the command, you the ability, you the encouragement, you the dominion to fight. However, when one participates in a battle, they prove what the will and the power of God. I've heard from your own words that you love hearing testimonies of the supernatural works of God. I would state to you, how much more would you love it if you performed the supernatural love powers of God? Because it will prove his strength. It will prove his ability. And when you've had victory over 10 demons, the 11th one that comes by isn't going to really scare you as much as the first one. We had this woman sitting right in this living room, sitting there bragging about when this demon comes out, he's going to puke all over you, but better get some paper all over the floor and this and that. And she started to go puke, and I rebuked her, and she and made her, hold it, you ain't going to puke. And guess what? She never puked. You ain't going to freak me out and scare me with your intimidation. Is that what I say? I didn't want to clean up her mess? Yeah, so I rebuked it. It says she can't do it. Okay, this makes, so when you prove this out, this makes them less anxious about the future than, than only reading or hearing of God's provision. You know, you could hear me preach this day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. But until you do it yourself, it, it's not as much. You may believe it, but it's not proved. Absolutely. Furthermore, you are guaranteed success. You are guaranteed success in all your battles that are fought in the power and might of the Lord. So there is no real reason 
to be held by captive by the devil any more. How many of you, including myself and, well, I can't say and my wife, but including myself, we want to say, I get tired of fighting this fight, and I know we're going to go for it always. I already mentioned that. But we want to have the victory. And so we fight and fight. But we kind of are doing the work of the devil by saying we want to see the victory when we have the victory. Because when we pray, like when I came to pick you up, I had to pray for my dog. I was whining, complaining, bitching that, that when is this just ever going to get done, God? When are you going to protect us? Dog didn't get better. No matter how much I complained, finally I just re re went down there and I rebuked that devil. Get out, and the dog just instantaneous like, and it's like, wow, man, why do we grumble? Why do we complain? God has given us the victory, the power to do it. So if you got to do it 20 times a day, thank God that you have the power and ability to do it 20 times a day. Because what if you didn't? You would have been take. You would have been a casualty. You know, my wife and I, we suffer some major things, but we we are more blessed than just about anybody we know. Okay, we have love that goes beyond our uh, most people's understanding. Most of my neighbors, they 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 just they covet the relationship I have with my wife, even at work, when I talk on the phone to my wife, they sit there, the guy says, man, I wish I had a relationship like you have with your wife. And they, he never met her. Just the way you could tell by the way we talk to each other. Um, we, we financially, we don't have a bunch. We just got re, uh, uh, a report from a uh, uh, investment firm of how much money we lost. But you know, it really doesn't matter until you cash it out. It's like our house. How much money is our house worth? Nothing. Until we sell it. I told that to like her sister. You don't need to run from your house right now just because you'll never make what was in it before. What they they what they leveraged uh, waged leveraged against it because if the depression part if your house didn't drop in value you would have still been happy that you had all this equity and guess what guess who's wrong their house that house they lost is worth way more than they ever walked away with refinancing it and running with the money. And as a matter of fact, some of the persons that they are fighting against is now getting paid to live in that house that they built. Their arch enemy is living in it and getting paid to it because they're following the, 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 the promises of God. Not great Christians, but they're believing the promises of God that Des is preaching to them. Now, it's not going to get them into heaven, but it's going to give them... Is, is going to give them the abundant life on earth. See, God came to give us an abundant life on earth as well as in heaven, right? And most of us think, well, it's, it's more important to go to heaven. Well, that is true. But sometimes it's the goodness, well, all the time, according to the word of God, it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Not that God's going to throw you in the lake of fire. It's like we all know we're bad. We all know that we're children of wrath. We all, before we came to Christ, we all kind of like, God, are you got your thumb over us? Are you going to throw lightning bolts at us? You know? We don't need to be told how bad we are. What we need is a Savior that can raise the dead, and because of the wages of sin is death, we will die. Either we die today, to the flesh and be resurrected in a, as a new creation 
or we die at the end of it in the day, great and terrible day of the Lord. But we will die. The flesh. All right, everybody. So, um, oh, I forgot to put this uh, up. Let me put this up. So just in case you want to uh, send support, we do need support. But again, questions. Uh, here's the phone number, the address. Um, and um, of course, uh, the website. I will be posting this video on um, uh, Facebook also. So you could also cl click on that and find this address. Everybody be blessed and have a great Easter next Sunday's Easter. Uh, so bye now.